Praise the Lord, everybody, and everybody praise the Lord. My name is Elder Jael Russell, International Sunday School Sergeant at Arms, and I greet you all in that wonderful name, Lord Jesus Christ. And once again, Happy New Year to everybody. I pray that everybody's New Year is going uh, well this year. We thank and praise God for allowing us to see another year. And we have a treat for you tonight. Miss, uh, we have Mother Doris H Hudson with us this evening. And I know many of you are, ex are excited to hear what uh, Mother Hudson has to share with us tonight. And uh, you will be hearing from her in a few minutes. But before I hand the broadcast over to her, I want to give honor to whom honor is due. First, giving honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's ahead of my life. To our presiding uh, uh, apostle, our presider, uh, Apostle James I. Clark, to our vice presider, Apostle James May, to the entire board of apostles, the entire board of bishops, the entire board of presbyters, and to our advisor to the youth, Bishop Reginald Davis. Also, we want to give honor to our very own Sister Dolores Griffin, the International Sunday School Association Superintendent, as well as the, in, as well as the entire uh, International Sunday School Association staff. And once again, we greet you all in that wonderful name, Lord Jesus Christ. And once again, Happy New Year to each and every one of you. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to hand over uh, the broadcast into the hands of Mother Doris Hudson. Mother Doris Hudson, the broadcast is all yours. Praise the Lord, everyone. Truly, I honor the Lord Jesus Christ on today and certainly honoring uh, our presider, Apostle James R. Clark Jr., our Sunday School Superintendent, my namesake, Sister Dolores Griffith, her staff, Elder Russell, who was such a great blessing to me, and our International Missionary President, Mother Evangeline Jenkins, and a special greeting to all those who will view this lesson. I think and I praise God for the opportunity to speak to you on today. So we have a word of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for taking us throughout the day. Oh, God, with our minds stayed on you. Oh, God, we thank you for all that you have done, all you will do. Oh, God, we just thank you. And now, Lord, into your hands, oh, God, speak through me, Lord, that the words that I say, oh, might be a blessing to someone. And we'll give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight, uh, our topic is different types of hands in ministry. And our scripture will come from Proverbs 31, 31. And it says, give her the fruit of her hands and let her works Praise her in the gates. Now, I just want to give you a little background information on the hands. The hand is the forelimb or arm. It is specially constructed for taking hold of objects. Hands are also used to touch or to feel especially in the case of a blind person. Hands are also used in sign language or in gestures. The human hand consists of three parts, the corpus or the wrist, the metacarpus or the palm, and the digits, which are four fingers and the thumb. There are 27 bones in the hand, eight in the corpus, five in the palm, and three each in the fingers, and two in the thumb. There are 35 muscles in the arm, 15 in the forearm, and 20 in the hand itself. This arrangement gives strength to the hand and free the fingers for a variety of movements. Psalm 139, 14 says, 
I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. That was Psalm 139, verse 14. When God created us, he gave each member of our bodies a specific function, one that could be used to honor and glorify him. I realize I have given you an elementary science lesson dealing with the hands, but the reason is because I'm going to be talking a lot about the hands today and how they are used in ministry, how hands are helpful. And since they are part of our, our body and we're part of the body of Christ, then I will give you some tips on how useful our hands can be. Now, our hands are the servants of the brain. All that the hands do is a direct response to the brain. Our hands do many great works. Proverb 31 20 says, she stretches forth out her hand, yea, she reaches forth her hand to the needy. And as missionaries and the saints of God, our hands are a vital part of mission work as we labor in the kingdom of God. Whether the work is in our local church or in the state or even the national level, or it might be in foreign missions or either in home missions, our hands play an important part. Tonight, as the Lord blesses, I will explain just how our hands can bless, curse, help, give, work, worship, pray, and finally create. First of all, hands that bless. Exodus chapter 17 verses 8 through 12 gives us some insight into one important part of the hand. When the Israelites fought the Amalekites, Moses lifted his hands and in a blessing from on top of a hill. If he had his hands up, the Israelites moved forward in battle. But when his hands got tired and dropped, the Amalekites prevailed. Sensing how God was using Moses' hands to bless Israel in battle, Aaron and Hur held up Moses' hands until the victory was won. Yes, God can use men to bless others. I am reminded of the late Chief Apostle Bonner, a man that God used to preach the gospel. But God also used his hands in the building of several churches. The W.L. Bonner College and Library and the church in Columbia, South Carolina are typical examples of an all-hands-on-deck approach. Now, what do I mean by that statement? Is that Pastor Bonner assembled a group of skilled men from across the country to come to Columbia to work on the building project. My husband, the late elder Edgar Hudson, was one of those men whose hands assisted in the building of the church in Columbia. And today, the beautiful campus and church stand as a tribute to the work 
of many hands. And that work continues under the leadership of my pastor, Bishop Sylvester E. Indeed, the blessing was in the trees. And who can forget Pastor Bonner laying hands on thousands of people at the convocations? I've been saved 45 years and up until COVID-19, I had attended 43 of those 45 years, 43 conventions of the 45 years that I have been saved. And I have witnessed Pastor Bonner even when I got saved on his ministry in Detroit, Michigan. I have worked the altar with him and I have seen this man use his hands to bless so many people. And I know you have too, but I just wanted to stress that because it's so important to me. And not that I'm lifting up uh, the man of God, but it's the God in the man. That's that's the point I'm making um, now. We revere Pastor Bonner when he was alive and we cherish his memory in his death. But the God in the man is what caused me to be saved today. And I thank and I praise God for that. Now, the second aspect is just as hands can bless hands can also curse proverb eleven twenty one declares though hand join in hand the wicked shall not be unpunished but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered so what this scripture is saying really is that we are all joined together in this world but we have a choice and that is to do good or evil the righteous people shall be rewarded but those that do evil will suffer the consequences for example just recently a young man in Michigan used his hands to do evil by pulling the trigger of a gun that killed four students and injured several others. According to the Brady campaign, 316 people are shot in the United States daily. And every day, 106 people die from gun violence. That is not a beneficial use of the hands. Also, there's violence, spousal violence. There's violence with gangs. Um, those things are not beneficial for the use of the hands. So remember saints, let us use our hands to bless and not to curse. A third aspect deals with hands that help. Jesus's hands were helping hands. They were engaged in giving and healing by his beautiful hands. He was hung on the cross. He gave his life that we might gain eternal life. Proverbs 31 20 says, she stretcheth out her hands to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. So we as saints of God must become sensitive to the needs of others and stretch out our hands to help. We have churches in every state, in almost every state in the United States and 23 foreign countries. Those precious souls need our help and especially those 
in the foreign field. Perhaps you can't go to the foreign field, but you can certainly give money to help in the work. Recently, there have been several devastating hurricanes and tornadoes that have ravaged entire cities. Your hands can be a blessing to those in need in our country. And I can recall when I was living in Louisiana and Hurricane Katrina hit, I think in 2005, the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ was most helpful in rendering assistance to the saints in Louisiana. Some of them had lost everything. They were scattered all over and some of them did not return to New Orleans. But the saints came to our rescue and we distributed everything that they sent to us was much, much appreciated. So again, saints, your hands can be a blessing to those that are in need, whether they're in the foreign field or even here at home, your hands can bless. Our fourth aspect deals with hands that give. Matthew chapter 6 verse 3, the Bible says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The Bible also speaks about how we should give. Our attitude is especially important in giving. Second Corinthians 9 verse 7 says, every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Hands that give to foreign missions or home missions of the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ know where their money is going. Unlike some teller evangelists that some people support, actually, uh, you don't really know who got your money or where it went, but certainly it's more beneficial to support our own. And in doing so, we know where and what our money was used for. The fifth aspect deals with hands that work. Now, saints who are busy working for the Lord do not have time to mind other people's business. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11, the Apostle Paul admonishes us to study to be quiet and do your own business and work with your own hands. So when you're busy working for the Lord, you don't have time to gossip, backbite, or run from house to house watch soap operas or any of the other carnal things that are on television. Again, as an, as an example, I remember Pastor Bonner leaving the job site, his hands still soiled from the day's work, yet he used his hands to turn the pages in the Bible as he taught Bible class. Yes, glory be to God. What a man, what a man. What a God in that man, hallelujah. Mm. Our hands should be busy working to uplift the kingdom of God. Passing out tracks or knocking on doors, which are old school witnessing techniques which did work. They actually did work because that's how my husband and I started a ministry when we were sent out to a barren 
a barren uh, land. We went door to door, passing out tracts, doing street meetings. All those things worked back then. But of course, they work today. I said old school, uh, but really they can work today. But of course, because of COVID-19, we're unable to use this tried and true method. But God in his wisdom has provided a modern technology and social media platforms that continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are prayers, teachings, preaching almost every day over the internet. These are beneficial to the saints as a means of keeping us connected during this pandemic. Our next aspect has to do with hands that worship. First Timothy chapter two, verse eight says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath or doubting. Uplifted hands symbolize our total surrender to God. When we surrender to Jesus Christ, he is ready to receive us. His hands are always outstretched to us. God is no respecter of persons. Your hands may be tired, wrinkled from hard work, crippled from arthritis. They may be old, young, male, female, or even a child. Does not matter to Jesus. He will accept glory to God. He will accept your outstretched hands. To those who are seeking the Holy Ghost, Reach out, reach out to God. Raise your hands in submission. Raise your hands and worship him. And he will fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Our next aspect deals with hands that pray. Prayer is essential in the life of a saint. Prayer is direct communication with God. Psalm 28 verse two says, hear the voice of my supplications. When I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward thy oracle, Prayer is a means whereby we can praise God and make known our deeds and our desires to him. Prayer should be sincere and done with a believing heart. How often should we pray? The answer, pray without ceasing. How often should we How often should we pray? Pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. Lift up our hands in the sanctuary and bless God. Why should we pray? Every saint of God needs to establish a prayer life. Every saint of God needs to establish a prayer life. Prayer is a sure way to fight off the wiles of the devil. I believe I'll say that again. Prayer is a sure way to fight off the wiles of the devil, even Satan himself. Prayer 
will humble you. It will also help you to overcome those shortcomings in your life. And finally, prayer will reveal the deep things of God's word. So saints, let us fold our hands and humble our hearts and bow our heads in total submission to God when we pray. The old saints used to say, if you don't pray, you're not going to stay. And if you don't fast, you're not going to last. So saints, prayer is the key. Faith unlocks the door. So we must pray. More things are wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. Bishop Reginald Davis says that every morning during his morning prayer. And I thank and I praise God for him, for using his statement. And lastly, hands that create. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10 says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave. Saints of God, let us work while it is day. For no man can work when the night comes. And that means when you're deceased, your work is finished. We can use our hands now. We can use our beautiful hands to create many things that will be a blessing in the kingdom of God. Such things as sewing, cooking, baking, writing poems, writing letters for senior citizens, or this is a good one, or teaching them how to use the cell phone. And that's that scripture in Titus where it says, let the older women teach the younger women. Well, that's a good example. These young people are excellent with the top, with the technology. And they can teach the older women, teach us older women how to successfully use these cell phones. We can also use our hands for woodworking or either even building massive structures such as churches or even using our hands to create beautiful music on instruments. So whatever your hands find to do, do it all to the glory and honor of God. In closing, Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 and 24 states, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. My question is, what are your hands doing to help further the cause of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you blessing and not cursing? Or are your hands helping and not hindering? Are they giving and not taking? Are your hands working or wasting time? Are they worshiping or imitating? Are your hands praying or playing? Or are they creating or destroying? Saints, our hands are such a small member of the body, but what a mighty work they can do for the Lord. If your hands are not busy working for the Lord, then get them busy. And if they are busy,
please continue to keep them busy. Why? Because Psalm 24 verses 3 to 4 asks the question, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? The answer, he that hath clean hands and a pure heart. So in other words, the psalmist is saying, we must have clean hands and a pure heart inwardly and outwardly. If we want to inherit that kingdom that Jesus has prepared for us. Saints, Jesus is soon to come. All the signs are pointing toward his imminent return. My question is, will he find faith on the earth? May God bless you and remember you are safe in the hands of Jesus Christ. God bless you saints and let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. We thank you for this lesson. Oh God, we thank you for those who will view this lesson. We thank you, Lord, that someone might read it, hear it, and believe in it, and receive the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh God, we thank you now for what you have done and what you're going to do, because I believe, Lord, I believe in your word. Oh God, you said that where two or three are gathered in your name, you would be in the midst. So however many, Lord, that you allow to view this broadcast, oh God, send your blessings, bless that home, Bless them on their jobs. Bless the children in school. Bless the kids in college. Oh, God. Lord, bless our superintendent, uh, Sister Dolores Griffith. Oh, God, and remember Elder Russell, who has taken the time, oh, God, to assist with this lesson on tonight. And God, I thank you. I thank you for the privilege of being able to speak your word. I thank you for the privilege, oh God, oh, for taking care of me, oh God, down through the years. I thank you so much, oh, for how you have provided and made a way. Sometimes there seemed no way, oh, but God, you made a way. Oh, you said you would never leave the righteous forsaken, nor see his seed begging bread. And God, I thank you. My seed does not beg bread because you have been such a great provider. And I thank you. Thank you now for all things, oh God. And bless all those listeners. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Mother Hudson. What a blessed workshop it was. Talking about the different types of hands and ministry and uh, I definitely wrote down some notes and I'm gonna share that I'm gonna share some of the notes in a couple of minutes um but one uh thing that I um noticed um that a couple of scriptures came to my mind as you were uh teaching the lesson and one of the scriptures was Psalm 144 it says blessed be the Lord my strength which teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight my goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. That's right. You know, the Lord teaches, you know, our hands to war. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, that's a prayer that we need to ask the Lord. Lord, teach, teach my hands. Hallelujah. You know, to war. Hallelujah. Because we are in a fight every day in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Paul talked about the sword of the spirit. Hallelujah. Uh, do you have your sword in your hand? Hallelujah. Many people. Hallelujah. Oh, have the armor on, but they don't have the sword in their hand. Hallelujah. And that's one thing that we got to keep in our hand is the word of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. How often are you holding on to the word of God in your hand? Not just holding it. Hallelujah. But actually using it. Open it up. Hallelujah. The scriptures. Meditating on it. Hallelujah. Practicing. Living it out. Hallelujah. 
Oh, walk in it. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be in doers of the word and not just hearers only. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How, 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 how long? Hallelujah. How often? Oh, do you hold God's word in your hand? Hallelujah. Not just hold it. Like I said, open it up. Hallelujah. And read it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus. Another scripture came to my mind. Hallelujah. Mark, chapter, Mark 16, verses 17 and 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah, Jesus. You know, God has empowered us with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. The Holy Ghost hasn't changed. It has never lost his power. Hallelujah, Jesus. We have to have that faith. Hallelujah. Do you have enough faith? Hallelujah. Or that you can heal someone with these hands. Hallelujah. That Jesus can use your hands to heal somebody in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. When was the last time you walked in faith? Hallelujah. Somebody said they wasn't feeling well. When was the last time you visited the sick? Hallelujah. And they touched and agreed with them and laid hands on them. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, and believe that Jesus is able. Oh, to heal him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We serve a God. I know the time that we live in with COVID, but the Bible says he can heal all manner of diseases in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the type of God we serve. There's nothing too hard for God. For with God, nothing is impossible. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. Hallelujah. And the power that he has given. Hallelujah. These hands in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. You know, you talked about hands, hallelujah. What this is a great topic to start off the new year because so many people, hallelujah, were sitting on their hands, hallelujah, last year. Mother Hudson, I'm gonna say that again. So many people were sitting on their hands, hallelujah, doing nothing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How you got too many spectators, hallelujah. This right here is the month of January, hallelujah. This right here is the on time workshop hallelujah, that Mother Hudson just taught, hallelujah. Oh, get off, stop sitting on your hands, hallelujah, and ask the Lord, what can, what, what Lord, what do you want my hands to do? Hallelujah. And do it for the glory of, of, of the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. She talked about giving. Hallelujah. A lot of people had their hands in their pockets, Mother Hudson, last, last year as well. Hallelujah. They knew they had to give, but they kept their hands in their pockets. Hallelujah, Jesus. And they kept wondering why they weren't getting blessed <laughs> in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. Pay them tithes and them orphans this year. Hallelujah, Jesus. But Jesus said, if you pay those tithes, you know, he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. That you won't have room enough to receive. Hallelujah. He rebuked the devourer. Oh, for your sakes. Hallelujah. You wonder why you weren't blessed because you wasn't given. Hallelujah. You was cursed with a curse. Hallelujah, Jesus. He said, when Mother Hudson said, if you sow sparingly, hallelujah, you're going to reap sparingly. Hallelujah, Jesus. You want a raise. You want a promotion. You want a better job. So, Jesus said, I give seed to the sower. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. You, you said, Mother Hudson, people that work do not have, the, do not have, but people that work do not have time to mind other people's business. Hallelujah, Jesus. And one of the reasons is, hallelujah, because they're about their father's business. I'm going to say that again. People that work do not have time to mind other people's business because they're about their father's business. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's how you know people, hallelujah, ain't working for the Lord. They got their mind on everybody, but they know what everybody else is doing. Hallelujah. We got a lot of Sambalas and Tobias out here. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need some more Nehemiahs. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need some more workers. Hallelujah. We need some more laborers in the vineyard. Hallelujah. Jesus said, hallelujah, the harvest is plenty. Oh, but the laborers are few. Hallelujah. The reason why they're flu is because a lot of people ain't doing nothing. Hallelujah. Get off your hands. Stop sitting on your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. I wrote down this. Hallelujah. I wrote down another note. Uh, our hands should be busy. Hallelujah. Building the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. That's what we need to be doing. Build in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We all, hallelujah, are part of God's body. Hallelujah. And we all have something for us to do. Hallelujah, Jesus. We need, hallelujah, to use these hands. You know, when you look at the human body, hallelujah, he gave us two eyes, two ears, two hands, two legs, and two feet. Hallelujah. He gave us one mouth. Hallelujah. <laughs> that mouth, hallelujah, is used more than everything that we got double of. God knew what he was doing. <laughs> in the name of the Lord, Jesus. Guys, he knew what he was doing. He wanted to be doing more working and less talking. I'm going to say that again. He wants to do more working and less talking. In the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. He says, uh, you, you point out another thing about how Titus, how the mother's supposed to teach the, the young woman. Hallelujah. And the Older men are supposed to teach the, the, the younger men. Hallelujah. And the younger people can teach as well. Hallelujah. You know, technology is powerful. You talked about handing out tracks and uh, God will give us the wisdom for another method. And I got that method for you, mother. It's on your phone. That's what you're talking about. You can send somebody. Hallelujah. A text. You can send somebody an encouraging word. Hallelujah. 
Oh, you can send somebody a scripture via text. Hallelujah. You got it. You can use your phone. You can go online on your phone and, and, and forward the, 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 the scripture that you want to them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, we got the technology, mother. Hallelujah. Jesus. They ain't got to knock on the door. And guess what? They're going to come right to their phone. They're going to pop up. And they're going to see it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Look at that wisdom. Look how fast. Hallelujah. The Lord and answer. Hallelujah. Oh, that prayer and so that problem. How you got to use that technology? When was the last time you sent? Hallelujah. An encouraging word of scripture to somebody. Hallelujah, Jesus. You know, when, when we use, uh, when we uh, have some of our classes uh, virtual, we have a morning glory prayer. And this is what I do when I evangelize. I send people the morning glory prayer. Hallelujah. To their phone. Hallelujah. All they got to do is just click on it and cut it on. Hallelujah. Same thing with the Sunday school. I'm, I'm I'm sharing something with you. All of you watching Sunday school, send the Sunday school via to, to your friends, to your family by phone. Hallelujah. You can do it. Pull it up on YouTube on your phone and forward the video to them. Hallelujah. They can watch the video. Hallelujah. That's what I do, Mother Hudson. Hallelujah. That's what the Lord has laid on my heart. You know, send these videos. Oh, to people, hallelujah, that need to hear the word. Hallelujah. Send this video to people that need to be saved. And you got people, hallelujah, that are not saved, that are not a part of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ watching these videos. And some of them are watching them right now. Hallelujah. I send it to my co-workers. Some of my co-workers may be watching right now. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm almost done. Hallelujah. You gave so much meat. I was like, I'm chewing on it, mother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost done. Um, establish a prayer life. That's very important. Got to establish a prayer life. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's the only way we're going to be successful. Hallelujah. The church was founded on prayer. I'm going to say that again. The church was founded on prayer. On the day of Pentecost, they were praying. Hallelujah. Before they got empowered with the Holy Ghost. Oh, they were praying. Hallelujah. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was a man of prayer. Hallelujah. He even stepped away from his, from his disciples. Oh, to pray. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. When you read the Bible, most of the miracles happen. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament and in the New Testament because people were praying. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah. By praying, hallelujah, we're, we're, we're strengthening ourselves, hallelujah, our relationship with God, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, we're communicating with him, and most importantly, we're able to hear from him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah. That's what he wants. He wants, hallelujah, us to have that relationship with him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he will, hallelujah, direct our paths in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll tell us exactly what it is he wants us to do, hallelujah. So if you don't know, hallelujah, what, you, what, what, what God wants you to do with these hands, I'm advising you, hallelujah, tonight, oh, to seek God's face in prayer. Hallelujah, Jesus. Trust in the Lord, hallelujah, with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways, and he shall direct your paths. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus is still the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, he knows the way. Hallelujah. He wants you to go. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you can't get lost. Hallelujah. Following our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But once again, hallelujah, we thank you, Mother Hudson. I could go on and on. You done stirred me up. <laughs> hallelujah. But you fed us well tonight, Mother Hudson. And if anybody, hallelujah, didn't get anything, as you can see, I got a lot out of your workshop tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah. It's truly rich. And, I, and, I'm, and my prayer is that those of you watching tonight, watch this video again, because she said a lot of good things. Hallelujah. The Lord laid a lot of things on her heart. Hallelujah for her to share with us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We thank and praise you. We thank and praise God, Mother Hudson, for allowing him to use you uh, tonight mightily for his glory. And as you can see on the screen tonight, Sunday school is big business and we are about our father's business. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Many of you have been watching this broadcast all last year and didn't, and didn't subscribe. Please subscribe. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you subscribe, you'll be the first to know when we upload new content on this channel. So once again, Sunday school is big business, and we are about our Father's business, even in the midst of a pandemic. You be blessed in Jesus' name. God bless you.